Dear YouTube and ATF, this is a toy gun. It's an airsoft gun. So please don't contact me or come to my door asking me any silly questions. Anyway, I thought that a folding stock was pretty cool. So then I figured, why not have a folding suppressor? I thought this was a really cool modification. Where's your suppressor stamp? What? I just said it's a toy gun. No, 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 no. How's it going everyone? This is my new VSR-10. Now I have so many virgin hours and so much money dumped in this thing and it's pretty ridiculous considering it's a toy gun. In this video I'm going to go over all of the modifications that I did to it and then later on I'll do a shooting test. So I really like the idea of a folding stock. So I was able to fit one onto this gun and then I thought that it would be pretty cool to have a folding suppressor. So I was able to make that happen and I have all these other different things that adjust as well bipod, monopod, all pretty useless for airsoft, but I'll touch on that later. So, in order to get the folding suppressor to work, I obviously needed some type of folding adapter. I was going through some parts bins, and I happened to notice a VSR-10 outer barrel and a buffer tube were about the same size. So then I was thinking, is there a way that I can attach a folding stock adapter to the barrel? I looked into a buffer tube die, and I was like, well, I can just thread the barrel and I can put on whatever adapter I want. The problem was, a VSR-10 outer barrel is too thin, so if you were to re-thread it, there wouldn't be enough material there to make threads. However, PDI makes two-piece VSR-10 outer barrels, and the front halves are thicker, so there's plenty of material there to re-thread it to buffer tube threads. So I ordered the front half of a PDI bolt barrel because I already had the base. As far as that goes, I just put it in a vise, used the buffer tube die, and just tapped some threads into it, and now I can actually break the lock nut loose and I can turn the suppressor wherever I want. I could have it on the bottom if I wanted to. I could have it, you know, in front of the scope. It's just fully adjustable, just like a buffer tube is on a stock. I also already had an MDT folding stock adapter. However, the mechanism for the MDT folding adapter would get in the way of a BB passing through. In fact, most of the folding stock adapters have something in the middle, so a BB won't be able to pass through it. When I bought this one, it's an SB Tactical folding adapter, it looked like it was exactly what I needed. I base everything off of pictures that I see online. So I go on a website, I think about what I want to do, I look at all the pictures of it, and I just envision like, can I hack this up the way that I want for my idea to work? So I waste a lot of money and I chance it, and in this case, I was able to get something that I wanted to work. So this is what the SB Tactical adapter looked like in the center when I bought it. But I had to do so much work to it that now it looks like this. I'm really happy with how the folding suppressor came out. I don't think it looks too bulky. It locks in place this way, obviously, and then it locks to the side. You don't have to worry about it flopping around so I can have the gun shorter if I ever want it to be. Moving on to the rest of this VSR-10. The body is from a classic Army SR-40. That's a fully VSR compatible airsoft sniper rifle. I took the SR-40, I had the stock laying around, and I chopped the back of it off and I used this real steel shotgun adapter that takes buffer tubes and AR grips and I merged them together. If you've seen any of my other videos, usually when I make a custom rear stock, I make steel side braces because with the tools and equipment I have access to, that's just the most secure way that I can bolt everything together. Hi. And I don't like using epoxy. So since this VSR-10 is now adapted to AR buffer tubes, the options for stocks are essentially endless. I can run any AR stock that I want. I really like the Luth AR stocks. I think they look really nice. This one you can add the optional cheek riser, butt plate, and rail pod. For the grip, I chose an MDT Elite grip. If you haven't noticed by now, I like options and I like things to be adjustable. This MDT grip can slide front and back and it can also tilt. I also think it's very comfy and it ended up fitting really well with everything else. For some of the other parts, I have an Airsoft Pro receiver, Maple Leaf Mock Mag, and close to a full edgy kit. I bought his spiral cylinder and hollow spiral bolt handle matching end cap, and I ended up having the end cap and bolt handle powder coated a chocolate brown. I love the colors of this rifle. You could say it's 50 shades of FDE. I call it a candy bar rifle because it looks like chocolates and caramels and doesn't really taste like a candy bar though. You may have noticed that this rifle is left-handed. It's really nice that Edgy is able to make left-handed parts, but as everything else, there were more modifications needed. I did have to modify the Airsoft Pro receiver 
because it's a right-handed receiver like every other nice one out there. They do make Action Army and Maple Leaf kits, but I had to have the cool one from overseas in the Czech Republic, the Airsoft Pro model. I was able to notch my Airsoft Pro receiver so my left-handed bolt handle worked perfectly. However, when the bolt handle was down, nothing stopped me from pulling the bolt back. It didn't really have a cutout like a normal right-handed person where you can't pull it back. So I used a fluted charging handle that I use on my straight pull HPA VSRs and I made a bolt stop. So you can't pull this back without lifting the handle over it. And it actually is nice because when I lift the handle up, I can put my thumb on it and it assists me starting to pull the bolt. So it ended up working out really well. I was surprised. Usually when I hack the shit out of everything, something ends up not working right. So another reason that I go completely overboard with all these modifications, upgrades, and features on my VSR 10s is because of my friends. I have a few friends that don't have any airsoft guns and they don't get out much. And when they do come out to the field, I like them to have something that's pretty cool, fully upgraded, and have just as many options as I have. So I have a Bull Trig Gen 2 trigger in this. The Gen 2 allows the spring guide stopper to be dropped down so you can quickly remove the whole bolt, cylinder, piston, everything. But you can't remove it unless you have the rifle out of the stock. Ever since I owned an SRS, I love how quickly you could pop the butt plate off and all the internals would come out in like three seconds. I was able to do something similar. It's not quite as fast, but it's better than taking the whole rifle apart. So if you just make sure the cheek riser is down, you can pull this lever here and the whole bolt can come out. Now, if one of my friends is long and they're, you know, right-handed, like a normal person, I can just slide this right-handed bolt in here. You just have to push the sear down so the cylinder can go past it. And just like that, the gun is right-handed. It's a lot faster than taking the gun apart, and I think it's a pretty cool feature. Oh, you just have to push the pin back up in there. But I was able to modify the bolt trig. The spring guide stopper has a tab on each side, and I just drilled a hole through that tap some threads, and then I found a lever that was curved so that it wasn't the way of the trigger and it didn't hit the stock or front of the trigger guard, and I just bolted it to it, drummed out the stock a little bit, and that's all it takes. So now it can be right or left-handed in a matter of seconds. So one thing that I always like having on an airsoft gun was a carry handle. I always liked a bottom mount handle. So I was able to take this skeletonized GoPro handle that I found online and make a carry handle. Now, if you're familiar with VSR 10s, you may have noticed that the carry handle is blocking the mag well, and there's no way to put the mag in. Don't worry, I have a solution for that. I was able to put a flip to side adapter on the carry handle. So if I need to put a mag in or change it, I could just keep it flipped to the side during the game, and then the mag can go in and out no problem and nothing's in the way. So my one friend Max is all about making everything as light as possible. He's all about weight reduction, weight reduction, weight reduction, light, 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 light. He will take a screw out just to say 0 0.00001 ounces. So I made just about every attachment on this gun QD or quick disconnect so you can take it off in a matter of seconds. Let's say you don't want to use this insanely overpriced real steel scope for a toy gun. It has QD levers so you can take it off and maybe swap on a cheaper and lighter scope take out the mag and you can save some weight there. The carry handle is also QD. If you want a lighter stock or one that's not super kitted, that comes off in seconds and you should be able to put on any AR stock you want. If you don't want to run this Magpul bipod, I bought a special QD adapter from LaRue Tactical. You can just take that off. So already I can just tell you that this thing is feeling way lighter. Also, if you want to save even more weight, you can take a castle nut wrench for an AR, take off the lock nut, and my entire folding suppressor assembly will thread right off. So with all these attachments off, I can tell you just by picking it up that this rifle is substantially lighter. But let's see how much it weighs. I can tell you that if you're running around in the woods with your toy gun and you drop like four or five pounds, you're going to notice it, especially at the end of the day. So I think that just about wraps up all of the features on my new VSR 10. But without further ado, let's shoot the fucking thing. So first things first, let's chrono it. The hop is dialed in with BLS 0.48 gram BBs. Let's see what that 
looks like. It's not too bad. Angle here to show it. 311, 313, 311, 312, 309. Now I'm going to show you how much of a sound difference my folding suppressor makes on this spring-powered VSR-10. So go ahead and shoot one. Oh yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that was. <laughs> the sound difference is noticeable. It took some work to adjust everything, but I'm content with the setup. Now let's do some range testing with my new VSR. My friends helped me shoot at multiple distances, but I'm going to save some of that footage from my Airsoft Philosopher hop-up chamber video. We have this tradition of shooting Garrett with my new VSR-10s. So let's see what we can do at 300 feet. We ranged this tree way out here that you'll see better in the scope cam. One, two. Okay, 102 yards, it's a little over 300 feet. <laughs> Good? Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. That is so fucking Can we lay down? It's up to you, whatever's better for the camera. Yeah. Hold on, I can't see the screen. Up oh, there we go. I don't know if I can see Garrett from here. He might have to zoom. Well, I have the scope cam. Oh. Turn the hop up. He definitely saw the BB. Oh. Oh. You dodge it? No, I think it just went right near him. He probably saw it coming. Oh, hit the hill. Yep. Damn. Alright, one more and then we'll switch. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you can see them the whole travel coming Does it hurt? straight. Yeah, it hurts. All right, it'll all right. it'll leave a well. You can go out. You can go out. <laughs> it'll leave a well. It's not as bad as getting shot close up. Yeah. 100 yards is pretty far for a field legal airsoft gun. If my VSR can land a shot at that distance, I'm happy with it. Let's put Garrett behind the glass with Adam and myself in the crosshairs. Okay. All right. All right, you're good. Ow. <laughs> yeah. He's a pretty good shot. Oh. That almost hit me. I think that hit the tree. It did. Ow! <laughs> that hit me. Alright, do, do one more. Can't hear it coming. Mmm. That hit you? No. Zoom. I don't know if he's gonna keep shooting. Ah, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> Garrett was able to land some shots as well. He hit my wrist at 100 yards, and I'm honestly surprised that it hurt as much as it did. But I think it's about time that we wrap up this video. I know I jammed tons of info into this one, but let me know what you think in the comments. Help yourself to some links in the description and keep an eye out for a gameplay video. Be safe everyone, and as always, thanks for watching.